So, if we open up our map, which I will do now, uh, we have a little mark over there or on on, uh, on the mayor's manor, uh, and that's where we're supposed to go. Or rather, that's where the game wants us to go. We're not going to go there. We're instead going to go exactly where we need to go. Why waste time if you don't have to? Basically, what we're going to go there, they want us to talk to the mayor of Kakariko Village. His name is Sahasrala. Or Sahasrala, however people want to pronounce it these days. I always grew, in, grew up saying Sahasrala, so I will continue to say it as such. But essentially, they want us to go talk to him. He's not there, so you go, and it's his wife instead, and she's like, oh, I don't know, maybe ask somebody in town where he went, and they might tell you. And then you're supposed to go all the way down to the other side of Kakariko Village, and there's this kid sitting outside in the coop with chickens, and he's like, oh, you want to know where Grandpa went? Here, I'll show you on my map, or on your map. And he puts a mark over here, and then this is where you're supposed to go. But even when you get over here, he doesn't tell you anything important. He's just like, well, I guess I suppose if you go do this and get this thing, I'll give you a treasure and tell you more about what you're supposed to be doing. So, if I went up and to the left, that's where he would be located, but there's no point in going there because I'm not going to get anything for my efforts. So, again, just wasting time. So, we'll just go straight to where, we, where the game wants us to go in the first place. These little bouncy guys are our most knights. Uh, don't bother attacking them with your sword. They have too much health. Uh, most things can be stunned with the boomerang, and then you can walk through stunned objects and monsters. Although I will recommend that you kill these guys because they're usually good for money. Check that out. And money is very important. As we all know, money makes the world go round. Speaking of, I should probably go over here and get this chest. This isn't a speedrun. I don't know what I'm doing. I need to conduct myself as though this were not a speedrun. I would like to do this as fast as possible, but it's not a speedrun. Just want to make sure if you get that 100 rupees chest, because 100 rupees, I would like to have 100 rupees as soon as possible uh, by the time I get to Kakariko Village. Um, because I would like to buy something that costs 100 rupees. Now, you're going to get plenty of rupees by the time you get there, so. But having extra money never hurt anybody. I was trying a speedrun strat and it didn't work. Although I did only get three of them to spawn, so that's pretty cool. First magic I found. Neat. Little pots of magic. They allow you to, well, use your magic. We can go underneath the stage and kind of do whatever we want. I'm trying to get a feel for... Can I just not see that? Oh, hey. I don't think it tells you anymore. If I go to live, will it tell me how long I've been recording for? I have no idea how long I've been recording. That's pretty neat. I mean, I don't really care. I'm going to record these in chunks, but... No, the game strictly does not tell you how long you've been recording. I guess I'm just going to have to make mental notes then. I'll grab these arrows. I can't use them now because I don't have a bow, but I can use them later. Because this is a Zelda game. You get a bow. Which brings up a good point. How come in Zelda 2, they took your bow away? Like, you got to keep most of the most of the old trademark Zelda items, including a bunch of new ones. But the bow disappeared. Grab this key really quick. And then try to avoid this button, strictly because, we, ah, well, I just couldn't, couldn't avoid the button. And you didn't give me money. Not that that's a big deal, I don't need money right now or anything, just... Would have been handy if you dropped a fiver or something. Okay, let's see if I can get this. I think you can still do that in this version of the game. Are you serious right now? Oh, and I killed myself because those things deal more damage than I thought. That's Ding. a damage boost. At least now when I get back to that room, the... Well, first death. I was hoping to make this a deathless run, but... I guess that's not happening now. Oh, come on. Oh, and you guys aren't even going to give me money anymore? I see how it is.
Go ahead and be cheapskates, why don't you? Wish I could have at least grabbed the chest before dying. Because that way I wouldn't have to go all the way back around. Because I would have been able to open up a door, which would let me get... Well, it just would have brought me back over here anyway. Okay, I got one of them. Oh, and then all of them spawned anyway. It's the recording curse, man, I tells ya. And it's because I'm recording that, like, my brain keeps getting tripped up between gotta do speedrun strats, and I need to explain and point out everything I see. So it's just a natural conflict of interest. But it doesn't take long to get back to where we were. I can kill some more stuff, maybe get some more rupees. You never know. Do you have money for me now? No, still a cheapskate. Emptying out his pockets. At least that's what I'm trying to do. But yeah, I don't think he has pockets because he's just, you know, big old tentacle monster. Oh, no. So, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that again. There's no point in trying. We all saw it. We all know the speedrunners do it. We all know it's cool looking. We all know I'm not cool looking, so I have no right to do it. That's the rules. Of course, it's almost easier to do this because now the anti-fairies go everywhere and they're just like... There are so many of them and it's such a cramped room with a lot of narrow hallways in it that you are almost guaranteed to take a hit. And somehow, some way, one of them always manages to get up to that door by the time you get there, so... Almost like the game designers knew. So, in the big chest, which I didn't acknowledge my first time through, we get the bow. A uh, really good item to have early on is the bow. Uh, this way, not only can we hit enemies from afar, we can also, I believe it even says, uh, deals extra damage to uh, armored enemies. Oops, nope, should probably put that on. Alright, I think it's the one on the right that has the key. I can go over here. There's a room on the right, although I think there's just rupees in there. I don't know if I've actually ever been in that room in any time in the last 10 years or so. So that guy was standing on a switch. How come he didn't set off the switch? I'll never know. And then top left switch in this room. And then we'll take care of these skeletons really quick. Oh, come on, you. And then this guy is red. Uh, the green ones you can attack with your sword, this one you cannot. Charge up a spin attack and then go into this room and then kill all the wormy guys. And then I don't know how to do this trick very well at all. So why even try? And then just wake you up again. There we go. Full hearts, full arrows, let's go! For boss time, these are the six Armos Knights! There is a quick strat set up to be able to take these guys out rather quickly. Uh, I don't feel the need to do that because, again, not not speed running. You still, however, want to be on this side. It is the safest place to be. And we can grab ourselves a hard container. And in the first meh, minutes of the game, uh, we got our first dungeon completed and our first pendant. This is the green pendant. It is link colored. It is the pendant of courage. Take it to Sahasrala, who we have yet to meet. Two pendants remain, even though I didn't know there were pendants to begin with. This is what happens when the context clues go out the window. Alright, so now if you really wanted to, you can start fighting our most knights. One arrow will put them down, no problem. Uh, which is why I recommend waiting. So, let's go meet Sahasrala, who we have yet to meet. Oh look, it's an old man. You are correct, young man. I'm Sahasrala. The oh, we still have to go through this anyway. Neat. The village elder and descendant of the seven wise men. Of one of them, at least. What? I'm surprised, a, I'm surprised a young man like you is looking for the Sword of Evil's Bane. Not just anyone can use that sword. According to... Okay, we don't need to know any of this. So he's telling us about the three pendants, so we have to go do the three dungeons, and then he'll probably put it down on our map where the other two are. But I already know where they are, so that's not a big deal. 
Uh, so I'm uh, gonna give you this treasure. This is for completing the Eastern Palace and getting the Pendant of Courage. We now have the Pegasus Boots, which allow us to run like a steed from place to place, and we can break uh, some some cracked walls. Uh, others can only be bombed, but the ones with the circular outline like that, you can just you can just run into them and you'll be fine. So, now that we have the boots, travel is going to be a lot faster. Yay, look at me! Wee, I'm a running madman! Uh, you do hold your sword out in front of you when you run, which allows you to attack enemies, much like that. Uh, so, we're going to go back this way. Uh, I suppose... I guess it doesn't really matter which way I do this. I'm just going to go this way, because I feel I don't go this way usually. But if we go back up this way, kind of where the princess was, I guess I could have safe warped. But, nah. Save warpings for quitters. And I ain't no quitter. Because that, that is technically what you're doing. You're saving and quitting. But, so we're just going to pass by the pretty looking cathedral here. See that Zelda's safe and okay. So, something I have yet to see, interestingly enough, but there is one right here. There's these stacks of rocks. Um, there are rocks throughout the game. That you, some that you, some are big, some are small, kind of like those ones over there with the gates on them. They're big. And there's that one up there. That one, or that one's big. The the ones with the gates. These are small. Uh, and then we have little conglomerates like this one. You'd figure, well, they just look like stones. I can pick them up. Well, first of all, I don't even have the ability to pick up rocks. But second of all, these ones you dash into with Pegasus boots and uncover secret areas, leading us to our first heart piece of the game. Collect four heart pieces, get a new heart container. There are 20 heart containers in total, and you get, uh, one, two, three, and then another seven. Ten of them for bosses, which means there are a total of, uh, four times seven hearts left. 28 heart pieces! I think that's how the math figures out. But. So now we're in Kakariko Village. Oddly enough, you go to Kakariko after you do Eastern Palace, because there's a couple things I want to get while I'm here. A few more heart containers, a few items, grab some stuff, and jump down here. That guy just says that this place used to be a thieves' hideout, and that's not interesting in any way, shape, or form, so we're going to ignore him for now. We'll set a bomb right there, because that is a area in which you could use a bomb over here and then by solving this block puzzle we can get all these rupees 20 rupees in each chest and who doesn't love money am i right then we can come up here break some pots five rupees in each pot so there's a grand total of 35 rupees in this room or just 30 rupees i can math and we get another heart piece for our efforts you can tell i just treat heart pieces like they're pieces of candy i don't really don't really care. As long as I have 20 full heart containers by the end of the game, picking up heart containers is, in, is or full heart containers, picking up pieces of heart is rather inconsequential to me. So now we'll go over here and we'll jump down this hole. And if you haven't gotten any bombs yet, you can get some here. Got some bombs. Oh, that doesn't work. I guess I can't throw it over the... Yeah, I just can't throw it over the chest. That's fine. We'll get these first. We get a red rupee there, blue rupee there, red rupee here, blue rupee there, and a red rupee there. And if you thought we were done, we have more treasure chests and more blue rupees and hearts, which is good because I hurt myself on that bomb. Giving us another piece of heart. Just one more. We'll get another heart container. If you know where to look, you can get a lot of pickups really fast in the early game. Man, we have 460 rupees already. This is nuts. We're going to go down here. This guy's a peddler uh, for 100 rupees, the low, low price of 100 rupees. We can buy ourselves a bottle. Although I don't know why you'd want to buy a bottle. I mean, I, if I want to have 100% item completion, I have to buy that. But, I mean, you could also just, you know, go down here into the bar through the back door. And there's a chest with a bottle for free in it. So now we have two magic bottles. There are a total of four in the game. You can get the first three relatively early on 
but uh, the last one's going to take some doing. And then we go over to this kid, and since we have a magic bottle, I can't go out because I'm sick. Cough, cough. People say I caught this cold from the evil air that's coming down off the mountain, Sniffle. This is my bug catching net. I'll use it when I'm better, but for now, I'll lend it to you, friendo. And then we get the bug catching net, because we have an empty bottle to put stuff in. Also, that's not how illness is contracted. So this is the kid that, if you didn't know where Sahasrala was, this is the kid you'd have to talk to. And now that I have Pegasus boots, even though we have no idea anything about this guy, it must have been easy for you to kidnap Zelda. Dead. Useful things just bonk into trees. That's what the game's trying to tell you. Use the Pegasus boots to bonk into stuff. It'll give you stuff. Speaking of... Let's see if it happens. Every time I try this, every time I speedrun this, well, not speedrun, but every time I would stream this, I'd be like, let's see if it happens today, and then it never happens. So let's find out. Ah, five rupees. 